This is Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Unplugged. The podcast where all the artists go to tell it as it is. Careers, music, tours, and more. And here's your host, the man that refuses to eat squid, Pat Calamari. Hey, welcome to another edition of Pat Soundbites Unplugged podcast. Pat Calamari here, your host. Keeping new music alive on the radio and video is what I do. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button on YouTube and hit the like button and follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Episode number 181. My goodness. I think every time I talk to one of these artists, the smile just doesn't want to come off my face. Big fan of this artist. Producer, multi-instrumentalist, co-founder and bassist and principal songwriter of one of the great bands that came out of the 90s, in fact, 1992, with their album Core. And I'm talking the incredible Mr. Robert DeLeo. And over his 30-year career, Robert has just released a solo album called Lessons Learned. It's a pretty interesting album for Robert. This is not close to a Stone Temple Pilots song or sound. Well, maybe the sound, but not the songwriting. This is all strictly Robert, deep down and personal. Lessons Learned came out on Friday, October 21st, and I got the wonderful honor to chat with Robert via phone and uh, I got to meet Robert at Daryl's house back in 2016 when he was uh, on tour with a side band that he does with Phil Cullen, a Def Leppard and Deborah uh, Blackwell Cook and Forrest Robinson and they call themselves Delta Deep a real good blues rock band I got to hang out with those guys backstage and a lot of fun, been always a fan of Robert DeLeo and his brother Dean and Stone Temple Pilots. In fact, I just saw them in July at a benefit show in Peekskill, New York. Um, what can you say about Robert DeLeo? One of the most sincere, genuine human beings on the earth. And certainly, and I just love watching him perform on stage for a man with a big frame, 6'2", with a huge guitar. I mean, he just motivates around the stage. I, I, t- I told him, you could hear it on the interview, um, you feel every note when you watch him perform and uh, listen to the great tunes of Stone Temple Pilots. So, yeah, Robert DeLeo, how cool is that? Can't wait to hook up with him. Can't wait to see them back on the East Coast and uh, get to say hello and hang out with him. Just a terrific guy. Go check out this album. Every time I listen to it, I have another favorite tune. Um, It's very, like I said, very deep and personal. Um, But it's Robert and uh, a great, great chat. Love this guy. So as always, sit back and enjoy the ride. Live, love, and laugh a lot because life is way too short. Go check it out. Go purchase it. You will not be disappointed. Here's my good friend, Robert DeLeo. Hey, this is Robert DeLeo, and you are listening to Pat's Soundbite Unplugged with my great friend, Pat Calamari. Hey, live on Pat Soundbites Unplugged Podcast, keeping new music alive well on the radio, on video, on any way that we can do it. And what a great show today do I have for you, a track that I've been playing since it came out. How I love this guy, and well, it is bad, but I love his new album called Lessons Learned, and I've been playing Love Is Not Made of Gold, and I know my listeners have already hit me up going, oh my goodness, what a pleasure and honor to have multi-instrumentalist, producer, bassist, songwriter, well, a, a great I, a co-founder of the great iconic band, Stone Temple Pilots, my good friend Robert DeLeo. Robert, how are you today? Pat Calamari, how are you, man? 
I can't get the smile off my face. I've been looking forward uh, for a couple of weeks. I, I think I drove your manager and came crazy the minute you put this out. I said, I got to have this guy. I got to talk to Robert. I got to. So I am thankful. I am thankful for your management and Kim and for you. For <laughs> Oh man, well, it's an East Coast Italian thing, isn't it? Well, yeah. You, 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 well, come on, you were a Jersey, you're a Jersey guy that you know went to the West Coast, but you're a Jer always will be a Jersey guy, right? Oh, well, I just, I, you know, just said to you, you know, we were, I, I was, I was on the East Coast uh, through August and September, and uh, wow, I really had a great time. I really missed it. Really missed it. I love going back there. It's just probably so beautiful. It's where I want to be right now. I'm sure it's. It's beautiful. We're talking about Massachusetts and the Berkshires, and boy, it's really a, a beautiful part of the country, isn't it? Oh my goodness, Robert! This is the best time. My my favorite season is the fall. The change of the leaves. Yes. You get to you get to the Berkshires. You get to Vermont. Even here in the Hudson Valley, we have to walk way over the Hudson and uh, the Catskills, uh -huh. and it's just beautiful. And I can show you some real good fishing holes because I know that's what you like to do. But we're gonna uh -huh. <laughs> we got to get you back. <laughs> But anyway, yes. anyway, before we get into all the fishing and the smallmouth bass and all that, we got to talk about this. <laughs> we got to talk about this great album that came out last Friday, October twenty first. Lessons learned, and you can go pre order right now. Go to shop at bandware dot com. Robert's got autographed posters, t shirts, and of course the vinyl one hundred eighty gram. I did my pre order, and I expect everybody else to do that as well. Robert, I mean thir first solo in 30 years I guess the time it's all about timing and I guess the timing was right uh, whether you took advantage of uh, you know this whole COVID thing that we dealt with or other things going on in your life it was time to uh, put this out there Yes yes I think, I think the original thing that happened was that was that time that allowed all of us to kind of um you know rethink life and uh you know i took that time to kind of dig back into my 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 instruments and uh i really wanted to just get back into my guitar playing i think that was the main thing um and and i had the time to do it we all had time to rethink what we were doing and what we wanted to do and the, and the world has changed because of it um and that was the main thing. I think once I started picking up and getting reacquainted with these instruments that I have, uh, it really it brought out in me what was what was internally in me. Um, so so that that's really where it started from. And 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 like you said, the timing. You know, we're talking about fall back there, and I I, I, I really wanted to get this record done so it would be released. And I couldn't think of a better time, October 21st, on a Friday for it to be released because I really wanted it to. It really portrays that that time of the that time of the year, that season, that fall autumn season to me. That really that this record really really speaks to me in that way. Yeah, it's a perfect time for a new release, especially in the fall. That the, the whole the, the whole change with the leaves and the trees, and it's beautiful. Yeah, I got you know the minute I saw the photo of you sitting, I, I'm taking it in one of your rooms on your carpet with all these vintage guitars. I said, well, there's a message here. You got some beautiful guitars. I'm not a guitar player, Robert. I, I should take lessons. My goodness, I I talk to enough people about guitar, but. I, it kind of reminded me at first of like Perdita. Perdita was an acoustic album of STP, and I, I, I guess my question is how how much inspiration um, of putting this together when you look at all those beautiful instruments in your living room, which probably create a great feel, a different sound, and probably the sound that you were looking for for this album. Yes, you know I, I've always been. I don't know. I guess I'm an old soul in a certain way. I've always been attracted to old things. I think they speak in a different way. Um, and I've always listened. And um, these old instruments, they, they, they mean more than just wood. You know, they, they, they speak to me. And um, each one has a different voicing and a different sound. And that's what I love about them. As far as, you know, making a record and trying to choose 
and pick which one is going to speak to you uh, or speak to the song the most. That's that's uh, that's very exciting for me. I, I I enjoy that. I wanted to portray all these and, and show show everyone all these all these instruments and and what they mean to me and which each one you know does and these these are all that picture of me are all the instruments i used on this record to kind of get uh get the songs across well it, it certainly does come across and, and i love the sound that you portray in the tracks i hear a lot of pedal steel it really brought me back to like the the seventies, like a little Eagles, Pogo, Bread, Pure Prairie League, very easy listening, very simplistic. Is that how you would describe the, the, the tracks of the album, Robert? Yes, yes. You know, I, I I'm a child of the seventies, and um, you know, I look I I look at that I look at that decade affectionately. It was a great time in my life, and uh, being able to grow up at that time and be presented with that music um you know and it's funny if you go back to 1971 and you look at the top 10 uh that was on the radio at the time i mean there are some really well constructed songs with a lot of integrity and uh even those were great so you know those songs stuck with me um they definitely were and are part of you know my my DNA now. Um, it's it's a. I think as we get older, we go back to a a, a, a simpler, uh, nice time in life, and uh, I, I I didn't mind visiting that on this journey that I took. You know. Yeah, I, I, I we're we're pretty much the same age we're like 29 and, and better looking but um yeah um, yes. you know growing up my mom always had the big band the elvis the chuck berry and of course the beatles and i'm a 60s guy you know born in the 60s and you know it, it, I, i'm blessed for that because i got to see like you said the 70s and the change with the 80s and the hair metal and the 90s with the alternative and every other thing but yeah i mean um i'm i, I feel blessed to have been around uh, really enjoy that type of music was there any thought i mean the songs that you wrote and created here musically are just beautiful any thought of just doing an instrumental for one of the tracks no no because i had too much to say lyrically um i just i just you know that was the challenge and that was the the the, the real gift at the end is getting um reaching out to these singers um there are five different singers on the record and then six including me on the last track um we've got uh pete shoulder uh and we've got uh jimmy necco and tim bloom and kara brits and johnny irian and then me on the last track um no i i i, I had too much to say i had too much to say lyrically and you know it's always that thing of being kind of uncomfortable when you go to someone to say hey do you mind singing this melody and do you mind singing these lyrics um and everyone was so open to it um you know tim and uh and pete helped me out with some lyrics on, on, on a couple of these songs and uh, but overall you know there was just so much to say uh lyrically to this record very therapeutic when you can obviously express um, your thoughts and, and things that you're going through in life and put it on musically. I mean, that's what it's all about. And then it's up to the interpretation of the listener. And I'm a lyric yes. guy. I mean, I you are an amazing songwriter, storyteller. I can close my eyes. And I just, even the title track, Lessons Learned, Bridges Burn, I Was Too Blind to See. I mean, it just seems so simplistic, but it, you can visualize the message that you're you're getting at i mean love is not made of gold i love crumble and corrode love is not you know i could just picture that so did you did you think of these vocalists when you were making the tracks like they would be the perfect they had the perfect sound to match the track because they come out beautiful yes pat that's exactly right i think i was catering um you know these songs to uh to to fit some of these singers I, I had them in mind and i think it was a matter of as a, as from a production standpoint of producing the record 
good. You know, you always want to get the right, the proper key just for, for, for these singers to sing. And you want to, you want to get that sweet spot of their voice in the right key. And that was the first thing, you know, it wasn't really a challenge. It was just the, uh, the process, the first process in, in getting these songs to speak as, as well as they could is, is getting that key proper for each uh, vocalist. And there's a wide range of vocalists, you know, from Tim Bloom to, to Kara Britz. It's, it's, a, it's a wide range. Right, and as the singer, as you know, they have to sell it kind of emotionally of what you're thinking. So, yeah, that had yes. a, that's an interesting uh, a little bit of a hurdle, but like you said, not much of a challenge if you know the people and you know their range. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I love every bit of it. I, I want to say, is there any plans to promote like a real small tour, like going to small venues, but I guess maybe logistically, uh, putting us the, the group together, different, you, you know, I just said vocalists, <laughs> could be a challenge. Yeah, well, we've got vocalists ranging from California to England, so um, <laughs> you know, we're, we were thinking about maybe uh, filming something, getting everyone together to film something for, for, for something like that. Um, I would love that because the talent, the talent in that room would be immense. It would be immense. Um, and that's the one thing I have to say about finishing this record and listening to it now as a listener is uh, I'm so grateful to have so many talented friends. I mean, just immense talent. Yeah, and you want to, you obviously, you, you want to showcase their talent. Yeah, live stream would be great. I mean, if you put it yes. all together, we would definitely support all that. But awesome. Yeah, I, I had to ask you. I'm like, boy, it would be cool to see you. But uh, I said it's got to be a little bit of a nightmare. I got to jump into STP, Robert. I got to see you the end of July here in Peekskill at the uh, Dave Z Foundation uh, benefit show. And, uh, oh, man, man, that was fun. You guys, I've seen you guys so many times, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm not, Robert, I've seen like a bunch of times, and, and I got to, I was a, blessed to met you but i gotta tell you out of a lot of artists that i, I love going to live shows it's all about the live show you can feel i mean i sat almost in front of you probably five rows in front of you um and you could feel the passion of every note when you perform it's i just it's incredible you do a, an outstanding job oh thank you thank you pat thank i mean you 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 know you're six six three four five you're such a big six two six two, two. big frame big bass and you 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 work the stage like a Michael Jackson but you can feel the music coming out I mean I know I, I, you know I'm not saying you're moonwalking but when you move around you can just feel the note of every track that's being played and my goodness boy can Jeff Gutt sing yeah well it's the moving is James Brown's fault <laughs> <laughs> okay man wow uh, yeah, so I, I yeah, I, I, that was a great show. That was a real intimate, cool little theater and great people there. I got to see my my friends from King's X and, and Steven Adler, and uh, that was great. That was great. What a, what a great cause and what a great night. And everyone was so uh, giving that night. Um, and great music. And, great, great. And, Great time, yeah. and for you to bring that young, uh, the, the young drummer that was all dressed <laughs> up on stage, and I'm like, that's what it's all about. I mean, his parents yeah. were like right behind me; they couldn't stop smiling. And you said, "Where is that guy? Can you bring up that kid right up here right now?" That that was the uh, that was the cherry on top, uh, Robert. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those nights. You know, I just had to do it. You know. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to go out of town. I missed you over here in Schenectady at the uh, the brew pub up there and out, outside of Albany. But uh, I will oh, definitely, I will definitely catch up with you. I know for STP fans, I saw on your website, you guys are uh, in Vegas, Fremont Street Experience on Saturday, November nineteenth, and I, anything out in Vegas is always fun. And I love Fremont Street, so uh, yeah, all good. Are, are you working yeah. on? I know I'm following you on Instagram. Um, a video is going to come out shortly or pretty soon for Love yes. Is Not Made of Gold. 
Yes, I've been shooting stuff from being on tour from around the world, actually, and uh, and um, got a chance to uh, you know j shoot Jimmy and uh, shoot myself, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a video for Love's Not Made of Gold either out this week or next. Oh, look in I, I shot it all on my iPhone, and I'm editing it on my iPhone, so it's uh, it's. It's it's coming out great. It's kind of making me blind. But it's like editing on my phone, but it, it's coming out great. Excellent. We're looking forward to that. I have put it on my website, and I'll definitely share that on all my socials. Robert, man, this is, uh, I pinch myself. been looking forward to this chat. My door is always open. I hope you enjoyed the chat as much as I have. So gracious, Pat. Thank you. And every time you go to the restaurant, you look at that appetizer, calamari, you know who the guy is. <laughs> I know, man. I know. They don't make them like you anymore, man. No, I, I'm pretty good with fried Diablo sauce. I thought my wife kicks me under the table. Like, really? You got to ask the waitress how good the calamari is? And at the end of the night, I get... At the end of the night, I give my credit card, and the girl starts laughing, too. So I'm like, hey, you got to have a sense of humor, Robert. Come on. I Well, you know, if you're from back east and you're Italian, every conversation leads to food, ultimately, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't telling me. <laughs> well, promise me next time you come to the East Coast, you, you ring me up so I can drive you around and you bring that wonderful fishing rod and we can share a lot of laughs. They have a lot of little wine and a little good food. Uh, sounds great, Pat. Thank you. Thank you for the offer. Thank you. It doesn't get any better than this, my friends. The wonderful, the amazing Stone Temple Pilots, Robert DeLeo. The album is called Lessons Learned. Go out and get it today. Go to bandwear.com. Get a t-shirt. Get an autograph poster. You are certainly not going to be disappointed. And Robert's on all the socials. You can follow every fishing hole that he hits and grabs a bass out of. Ha <laughs> ha!